What's going on, everyone? Jacob, Armchair Coaches Baseball. What's your name? Alex, also Armchair Coaches Baseball. <sighs> Have we met before? I don't think so. Whoa, well, whoa, whoa. What do you know about trades? Quite a bit. Quite a few are happening. It has been the Major League of Baseball. Major League of Baseball, hot on the streets. Hot on the streets. Trade, 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 trade. Trade, 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 trade. trade. Wasn't there? Today is July 25th, 2021. We'll trade this afternoon. This afternoon. You want to go into it? Yeah, let's, let's dive in. What happened? Who who was sent where to what city, from what city, for what people? What happened? Well, a little guy by the name of Adam Frazier. Major League leader in hits? Yeah, that guy. Oh. He went from what I imagine is a fairly chilly silly city. Chilly silly. That's number one. That's, that's stroke number one. Stroke number one. Stroke number one. Chilly city to what I imagine is a fairly warm city. Went from Pittsburgh to San Diego. Wooder? Wooder. He went from Wooder to water, dude. Water, dude. I think Wooder's more Philly. Really? Yeah. Is that the same state? Yeah, it is. I think they have a different accent, though. What are you talking about? I think it's a little different. What do you mean? They don't saw like a hey, like water. I don't know. Water. We need a we need a Philly correspondent. I got you right here. I throw batteries at people when my team loses. Mm-hmm. And at Santa Claus. <laughs> really? Yeah, there was one year like I think Santa Claus came out like halftime at like an Eagles game, and then crowd just lit him up with batteries. Phillies fans, you all are crazy scary. Don't like Santa. Hmm. Yikes. Yikes. So let's get into it. Adam Frazier. Adam Frazier. To the Padres from the Mets. Let's see. First from the Pirates, not the Mets. That's one for you. That's a total of two. We each have one. Okay. Deal. (laughs) The deal was first reported by Jeff Passan of ESPN. And uh, the Padres sent in a little guy. Their six overall prospect by the name of, I'm going to mess this up really bad, Tucapita Marcano. I don't know if that's if that's close, but I'm going to say it is. It sounds pretty legit. And they also sent over a guy named Jack Swinsky okay. and Michael Milano. These minor league guys? Yes. Okay. Yes. I've actually... Like I've never heard of these guys. I believe I played with Marcano on the show. Oh. Sweet hit and left. Uh, switchy. Switch, switchy. Switchy. Switch switchy. Hit switchy. Switch, switch. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's convenient. So I guess what... What in the world does this mean for the Padres? I mean, that team is locked and loaded to go the distance. A team that was already pretty stacked, just got the league leader in hits. So, who was the starting second baseman for the NL? Mm -hmm. But the Padres also had a second baseman all-star in Jake Cronenworth. Yeah. That I guess now, if we're talking, going down the line rest this season this gives the Padres so much flexibility as far as positioning guys because Cronenworth is one of those guys that can play all around the diamond he's been he's spent some time at first base a little bit at third all over you know all over and like Eric Eric Hosmer is not like getting younger all right he's not he's got a massive contract I don't know when it ends but you know he needs spell days he needs days where he needs the rest. And Cronenworth is going to be that guy that maybe potentially down the line is that permanent first baseman for the Padres. And this allows Frazier to go in the role at second. But what's also interesting about Frazier is that the dude can play both corner outfield positions and play them well. Yeah. But I think realistically you want him at second. So, I, I mean, with that crowded infield with the Padres – this does nothing but improve the Padres. I mean, it's a good problem to have. It's a it's a phenomenal. It's not like in the NFL when I played ball, not in the NFL. You did not. Yeah. No NFL for you. I did play college. You did play college. I did play college. I sort of played college hockey, but not really. We'll say you did. I'll take it. I'll there take you it. go. Um, if you've got, if a team says, yeah, we've got three starting quarterbacks, that's like a problem, you know? And like, if you... If you got, if you say you got two starting quarterbacks, in my opinion, that's also a problem. Like too. one of those guys is going. Has to, has to go. Yeah. 
But in baseball, when you got guys that are able to plug and play all across the field, it does nothing but give your team flexibilities. And we are hitting the final stretch of the season. Injuries are going to start piling up. They, I mean, you know, we've it's been a pretty bad injury season so far. Yasmani Grandal for the White Sox has a torn meniscus. He's going to be out for, I believe, at least six weeks, if not longer. Um, the White Sox made a little trade to uh, get some minor league depth uh, from the Rays. The Rays have been super active. Very active. They picked up oh, somewhat, my somewhat large God. name amongst the league from a, from a team called the Minnesota Twins. Brought in a bat. A bat. bat. Nelson Cruz on Thursday went from the Minnesota Twins to the Tampa Bay Rays for a minor league prospect. They got two guys, two two guys. Two, uh, two right-handed pitchers, Strotman and Joe Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Rays also got, I'm sorry, minor league prospect Calvin Foucher, also a right-handed pitcher. Ooh, and then the Rays, and then the Rays the next day trade Rich Hill to the Mets. Mm-hmm. Who did they get from the Mets? Do you know off the top of your it's head? On this, it's on this side of, the, of my notes. They got relief pitcher Tommy Hunter and minor league utility man Matt Dyer. Tommy Hunter is currently on the 60-day IL with lower back pain. That's who they got. They got him. At this point, I don't even question the Rays. I really don't. Because even though I don't like the way, like, how they play baseball, this small ball, the analytics, it absolutely kills me. It's not fun to watch. It's not. It's not a fun brand of baseball to watch, but they put guys in position to make sure that team wins. And you saw that last season. They made it all the way to the World Series, and they sure as hell look like they're going to make it this year, too. Like They're a hot baseball team, yeah. <sighs> Yankees aren't going to aren't gonna make the postseason. The Braves are making some moves. The Braves have put themselves in a position where they're a couple of pieces away from getting back into real contention. I don't want to say I don't want to say that we're ever out of contention, but we got to talk about it cuz we haven't talked about it. That was not one of the things that I wished for to happen to the Braves. And I recanted my Freddie Freeman. You recanted it. I recanted that. Your Chris Bryant things make me nervous though. You might will that into to existence. <laughs> that, that might be willed into existence. <laughs> I did not will Ronald Acuna Jr. blowing out his ACL. Yeah, that's rough. A massive, massive, massive blow to the Braves' postseason chances. It definitely is. We did pick up Jock Peterson. Yo. We picked up Jockey Pete. Young Jock. Young Jock, and he's been hitting bombs on the Braves. That's all he's done this season is hit bombs. Bombs. It's, I mean, it's not. it doesn't give you the same athletic ability. Yeah, and but Jock far- Peterson said himself, he's like... I'm not replacing Ronald Acuna Jr. No, he's not. He, he, I mean, you can't. Yeah. The guy is a face of baseball. But Jock Peterson's going to come in and do what Jock Peterson does. He's going to have a phenomenal time. Well, smashing ding dongs. Smashing ding dongs. Smashing ding dongs. Smashing. We got him for a relatively low price as well. All we lost was a prospect for his price, uh, first baseman, Bryce Ball. Is that stroke worthy? Is it like half a stroke? Eh, it's on the border. That's more just like a, of a stutter. Do I have to put you into speech therapy? We might. It might be worth it. I hope you have health insurance. I want my parents' insurance still. We should just skip right over that. Okay. (laughs) And the next day, though, the Braves made another interesting move. Shoring up, and I think this might be the end of the Braves going after bats. But they got a guy off the Arizona Diamondbacks. How do you say his last name? Because I say it like three ways. I, I've been going Stephen Vaught. I say Voigt. Voigt. But that's because I got Lukey Voigt. Yeah, Lukey, Lukey Voigt. And they're spelled completely differently. They are spelled. I'm, I'm saying Vaught because it's just V-O-G-T. Stephen Vaught, catcher. Yeah. Sure is up because you guys had a guy go down here recently, didn't you? Yeah, darn no. He's been out for a little while. A little, little while. You know, gives you gives you some flexibility behind the plate. Um, and he's not, he's not going to be your everyday guy. No, yeah. I, he, he has been for the most part, but the diamondbacks have also tried to incorporate more Carson Kelly, who could be a cornerstone piece of the diamondbacks going forward. Mm-hmm. But what Steve, I'm gonna call him Steve. Steve. I like that. I'll yeah. call him Steve. Yeah. Cause Steve's a cool name. Um, gives you some pop 
off the bench, kind of like what the Panda gives you guys. Yeah. And if you guys are going to go forward, you need that pop. The real question is, sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. The real question is, will he bring a new prop to the dugout? Because for me, that's been the story of the season with the Braves, is all these props. A lot of, a lot of dugout props. We have the panda head, you know, the home run. You get the panda hug. Yes. There's also swords. I've seen players with, like, little plastic swords. There's, like, a chop thing that they do. I'm not, fuck, I'm not messing around. Watch a Braves game. They have little plastic swords. They're involved in the dugout. I can't watch the Braves because I don't have regular cable and the MLB blackout rules are archaic for MLB TV. I need to get you the Bradley Sports app. We need to get that going. Maybe. They don't have it on PlayStation, which is really unfortunate. It's just not on the PlayStation. I listen to the radio broadcast, though. There you go. Yeah. But they have props. Well, what, team does, what, t- what team doesn't have props? You know, but will he? What my thing is, will he bring a new prop? Because it's been a lot of the new guys bringing the prop. Steve seems like a real. Um, he doesn't seem like a prop guy. No, Jock Peterson prop guy though. I could see Jock incorporating his it. first home run with the Cubs. They gave him a waffle maker. Oh, that'd be cool. So I, just, I would like for the for the guys to be eating waffles with the dugout. That'd be nice. That would you know a nice little treat in between innings. A little morale boost. I mean, who doesn't like waffles? Really, who doesn't? If you're a pancake person, see me in them streets. I like both. See me in the streets. See me in the streets. In the streets. As far as going forward, though, back to the Braves, because the Braves are really, are really like kind of the Braves have been a massive contender for the past couple of seasons. This is this is a fact. This is, just, yeah. this is true. Um, I mean, they're NL East winners. What they won it like three years, four years in a it's row. Like three years in a row. Yeah. Um, they need help as far as the bullpen goes. Starting pitching, not so much. I would like to see them add another starting pitcher, but bullpen wise, bullpen wise, that's the main concern for our, me, right? Our Braves correspondent Alex here. What the heck do they need to do? Do they need to maybe have a reunion with someone, or is the closing position not as important as some of those middle relief guys that you guys are look, need to? Because you need help across the board as far as bullpen, really bullpen, bullpen goes. across the whole board. Yeah, I mean Kimbrel would be nice. But asking price is going to be astronomical. That's the thing. I don't know if we have what they're going to be asking for. I mean, that's. I heard, uh, I read somewhere that um, Boston is being tied to Kimbrell. Another reunion, possibly. I've heard the Phil, the Phillies are in on Kimbrell. Let's go. Let's go into that because the NL East, as far as like everything goes kind of still very still wild, very much wild. very wild up in the air DeGrom is still out for the Mets the Mets need some help I know the Phils and the Bravos are still tied because we tied this this weekend series you you told me there was a report that the Nationals are in on trading Scherzer they said Dude. they're open to move him I don't I don't think it's gonna happen but I they, don't know if it the Nets either. did come out and say they're open to move Scherzer but I don't I don't I don't I see don't, it happening I don't see that happening either but again like Bullpen guys are easier to move as far as trade deadline goes. Yeah. But as far as like the situation that the Phillies are in, it's much like the Braves. They need more than just one guy in that pen. You know? Very, very true. Kimbrell is going to be, Kimbrell would be a great addition to pretty much any team. Um, But it's going to need some more help around him. Let's see. I mean, let's just talk about some guys that, are gonna are gonna are, are are on the market right now that teams are banding about. Primarily, most of those guys are on the Cubs. A lot of lot of Cubs. A lot, a lot of guys on the Cubs. Oh my gosh. About right now. Chris Bryant. Who knows where that guy ends up? I I say New York. I say the Mets. You've been willing it into existence. I mean, it it makes the most sense for the Mets to get him. He's gonna. It, it does. It it at this point, and I think um, under the new ownership. Uh, they're going to spend the money to do it because they did it with Frankie. They did it yeah, with Lindor. They did do it with Frankie. You know, Frankie Lynn. Um, Javier Baez on the market as well. Anthony Rizzo, maybe a package deal with Rizzo and Bryant going to Boston because Boston needs a little bit of help at first base. That'd be wild. 
And that but, would be insane. If both those guys went to Boston. Both of those guys went to Boston. They're rentals for the most part. Because the Cubs, the reason why the Cubs aren't are now in the position of having to trade Rizzo besides their epic collapse at the end of the first half of the season is that they weren't able to get a contract extension done. And Rizzo wanted to stay in Chicago, but they just weren't able to work anything out. So, I mean, that, to me, I don't know where those guys go. I'm almost 80% sure that Brian's going to go to the Mets. Rizzo, Kimbrell, a guy like Kyle Hendricks, who I could see working very well for the Braves. Yeah. As far as starting pitching goes. Just got that save. Speaking of Kyle Hendricks. I'm speaking of another guy. Oh. I just had a massive stroke. Oh, no. Oh, no. Dead air. Mm, scratch it. Repeat. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Um, What about another big big name? I'm going to completely go over that. We're going to continue. We're just going to move on. We're just going to move on. We're going to move on from the Cubs, and we're going to go to the Mile High, Denver. I think I know where you're going. Is it, is it story time? It is story time. Trevor Story is going to be the biggest name on the free agent market if no one can sign him to an extension. Yeah. The Rockies are dead in the water. Basically, as soon as they traded Arenado at the, uh, uh, before the start of the season, they were dead on arrival. No heartbeat, no pulse, baby. They were not doing anything this season. Story's gone. He's gone. It, I mean, it's as far as the interim GM position goes at Colorado... This is what's going to make or break if that interim title gets re- like taken off, he's full-time, or if he they just cut ties with him. Because if they don't get a massive haul for Trevor Story, this team, it, it's in, going to be in complete disarray for another decade plus. Yeah, this is a, a very, very crucial time for the Rockies. Yes. And they cannot screw this up. Yes. There's what? Like, put it like. There's like seven, eight teams talking with the Rockies right now from the last reports I heard. Um, Yankees being one of them. I Yankees aren't going to make the postseason. Why are we going to make moves? Why are we going to make this short-term rental to do something like this? This team has been garbage all year. We need to really reconsider our priorities as far as bats go. And as far as just like general endgame management, maybe we could trade Aaron Boone because I would love that. That'd be cool if you could trade managers, like you could players. That'd be kind of sweet. I think you can. Really? Just straight up trade managers? I don't know if you can. I bet you can. But I don't like I don't like story to the Yankees because if we do, if the Yankees take story, they're gonna have to sign him. They're gonna have to give him an extension. Yeah. And then that's gonna move Glaber Torres back to his home position at second base. DJ full time at first base. Um it's going to put Luke Voigt in the DH position and then Giancarlo Stanton into left field, which he's capable of playing. We just choose not to. Yeah. Just choose not to. Choose not to. Um, you guys' choice, though. So. Yeah, but as far as that, I mean, I saw a team talking to Colorado. I saw it only once, but it was very interesting to hear this team mentioned. Oh, I know you're going with this. The Seattle Mariners are currently like tied with the Yankees as far as the wild case uh wild card race is concerned in the AL potentially a spot. I don't think it would ever happen. It doesn't make sense. Be kind of cool. It would be kind of cool, but I mean think about it. Like the Mariners are talking about trading Jaron Kelnick. Yeah. You know? And like why trade your top prospect for a short-term rental? Yeah, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't. Ker- Kelnick needs more time in the majors, no doubt. But, like, Story is a proven commodity, and I could understand making that trade if the Mariners were truly a bad away from, like, not, not wild card contention, World Series contention. Because this is, this is how you do it as far as, like, if you're a bad away from winning the World Series and knowing, like, hey, we got, like, 70% odds. Now we just shot up to 80, 85, like top of the tier, like top tier team. 
that's a piece you want. But when I think of top tier teams and World Series contenders, the Seattle Mariners are not one of those teams. Not really. Not it. Not oh, dude. Really. Golly. The trade deadline is this coming Friday, July 30th. Uh, I believe at 4 p.m. Eastern is when it ends. Um, do you think there are going to be any surprise movers? Any surprise movers? Um, the biggest surprise for me, if they were to move, and again, I don't think it's going to happen, but if Scherzer were to get traded, that for me, but for sure, would be the biggest surprise. If Scherzer gets traded, I don't know what division he goes to. It's not going to be the NL East. Yeah. It would have to be some sort of massive haul for that to happen to be an NL East. But he's going to drastically change the direction of that club going forward because I don't think he's a free agent after this season. I believe it's next season that he hits free agency. And his agent, superstar agent, mega agent Scott Boris, Loves that open market. Yes, he does. And he's going to want to get Scherzer paid what, I mean, he's deserved. And that's top of top of market money. Yeah. You know, and you don't get that off of extensions for the most part. You know, Boris, he likes to play teams against one another. He likes to, you know, make some deals, do some stuff, do a little talking. And... It's harder to do that when you're just talking with one team. You got to pit guys against each other. Any other surprise moves? Battling off the hiccups. I don't know if you guys caught that on the camera. Battling the hiccups. I'm gonna I saw through. it. I'm going to power through. I saw it. We made eye contact and you were like, is something going on? Ooh, Castillo. Luis Castillo of the Reds. Yeah. I've heard his name mentioned very few times, but I've I have heard, heard mission. I've mentioned heard it. it. That would be a, a big shock. So there was Nick Nick Castellanos just got hurt. He's got a micro fracture. Um, that changes the course of this red seasons dramatically because this guy was this guy was hitting through. He was hitting three twenty nine. I mean, he led the NL in batting average at the time of his injury. And so is it time for the Reds to start thinking about, let's start moving on to next season, a couple years down the road? Because they got Castellanos locked up. They got a lot of their key guys locked up right now. Yeah. Moving Castillo. Castillo. Castillo? I think it's just Castillo. 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 Names are hard. I, I can't even say my sometimes. name. Names are difficult sometimes. Yeah. That would be a big move. It would be. It would put him back for the rest of the season. But that's a that's a top of the line arm right there. Dare I say ace? Dare I say ace? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know either. Controversy. All right. Starting to wrap it up. Wind it down. Wind it down. Winding it down. Was there any good news? There was some major news that happened. We'll end on this note. Major news happened. The Cleveland Indians at the end of the season are no more. No more the Indians. They will now be known as the Cleveland Guardians. The Guardians. The Guardians of what? The baseball galaxy. I do not want the Cle- Cleveland Guardians. I don't. I, <laughs> they should not guard the baseball galaxy. Quite frankly, they should they they can't guard anything right now. That is too much responsibility. That's way too much responsibility for that team. But the name change, it's official. It's been like a seven, eight month, maybe a year long process as far as trying to figure this out. Um, of course, the Washington football team, did they get a, a official new name? Not yet, but they're gonna they're gonna announce one. How did how did how did the MLB out of all the professional sports league that are the slowest to move on almost everything, get a team's name changed quicker than NFL. Because you're a Washington fan. I, I am a football team guy. Um, <laughs> the football team guy. Football team guy. I like the football team. Uh, I mean, I don't know. That is kind of wild. I thought that, like, like the change was immediate. Like they were just no longer the Indians nope. like from now on. Out. And I believe it's the end of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 
that's interesting. I mean, that's, I, I don't, that's I, interesting. I don't, what other choices were out there? Yeah. What, what, what is the other defining thing about Cleveland? The Cleveland LeBrons. I'm, I'm really trying to think here. The said the Cleveland city of no fun. <laughs> The Cleveland Miserable Winters. Miserable Winters. The Cleveland Rock and Roll Hall of Fames. Polluted Rivers. I think they have polluted rivers in Cleveland. Really? I think so. Why? Because they're dirty. It's a dirty town. Dirty, dirty town. Dirty, 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 dirty. Was there any other big news that happened this week? I've been a little off the grid this past week. I've been seeing the trade stuff and everything like that. But anything else major? Um, nothing with the Braves, which is all I've really. That's all you care about because you're not good. Mm. Hey, I've been keeping up with the trade stuff too. I know. Good for you. Good for me. Keeping up with one, the one responsibility you had. Yeah. Look at you. I think you're ready to hit Congress. I think so too. You ready to represent the people of middle undisclosed location? <laughs> I got our district. Chief. I think the flag is starting to give it away, though. Maybe a little bit. That's why I said over here this time. I mean, no one's gonna know. No one's gonna know. No one. No, it's a mid market. Yeah. Recording from an undisclosed location. It's me, Jacob, and me, Alex. We are together, armchair coaches baseball. A little part of cool armchair coaches. And that was a little bit of trade talk. No trade talk. Hope you guys enjoyed. Click like, subscribe. We'll catch you guys a little bit later on this week. We are going to be recording audio. Audio. A full hour of audio. Full hour. Tuesday evening. Baseball talk. Baseball talk. We're going to get off the rails. We are, uh, yeah. Oh, this week is going to be off the rails because we didn't record, what, like for the past like week and a half? Something like that, yeah. We got to get off the rails. We're going to go off the rails. A full hour of nothing but baseball. You guys, we would enjoy it if you found us. Find us. Listen to us. Do it. And we'll see you guys later this week. Have a good one. Thank you.